The movie is the 1956 Allied artist's gem, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and the star is, of course, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi, Tom. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I know you know the movie because you not only made it, low those many years ago, <laughs> but you just come back from a cruise ship where you do your Give em Hell Harry marvelous show, plus yeah. you take the film with you. Is that right? Well, I have taken it on occasion, but uh, this was unique. I hadn't done it at sea. Yeah? I was... I do give him hell, Harry, as you know, for quite a long time, seven years, the one-man show. And uh, on this occasion, it occurred to me that they might like to have something more than just the Truman thing, and I happen to have this cassette of the invasion of the body snatchers. Well, now, have I oversold it? Is it as good as I have just described? No, it's, it is a classic, and it certainly is a marvelous film, marvelously made by Don Siegel and Walter Wanger and the cast that's in it, of course. Maybe, maybe even I'll include myself. Good. We worked hard at it. <laughs> now, this was shot in Sierra Madre, but you at the time were a, were a New Yorker, per yeah, right. cut and dried, and I mean, no oh, question right. about it. Mostly theater actor. I right. think of myself still as being a theater actor. And early television, of course, live television. Live television, York. radio, all that stuff. But uh, when you came out here, uh, you came out and then you went right back to New York. Nearly always. Mm -hmm. You hopped back as soon as you could get back. And... Uh, I had been out here the previous year, though, and I had worked for Don Siegel a year previous to the making of The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. What had uh, you done for the director? Annapolis story. Oh, yes. John Derrick and, De and um, Diana Lynn. I remember it now. Yeah. Yes, I don't think I ever saw it, but I remember it came out, and it was a what they call a programmer. A but cadet a, story. A cadet know. story. Now, the shooting schedule of Body Snatchers was, what, about uh, three weeks, four weeks, something like Maybe, that? Maybe uh, three and a half, four weeks. Yeah, and it was shot remember. in Sierra Madre, which will be of special interest, of course, to well, the folks. Well, it was shot all over the town here as well. I ran all over Bronx, really? up Bronson Avenue here and up into the canyon. That, that, oh, for the, for the uh, later the, sequences, yes. The stuff yes. where I'm on foot, most mm -hmm. of the... Most of the the um, film, as far as I'm concerned, I had no wheels. I right. was on the move, and well, I ended up with Charlie Horses. Don Siegel, as we will discuss later, uh, also went on to a great career, including Riot and Well, it started with Riot and Cell Block 11, which uh, led to his getting this movie, and Dirty Harry and Charlie Verick and John Wayne's last movie, The Shootist, and a lot of things. And Sam Peckinpah, another great director, is in the movie, and he plays a small role as the gas man and uh, was the dialogue director That's for... Correct. Now, uh, about 30 seconds just to talk about Sam Peckinpah. Do you, did you keep in touch with him, I mean, after this movie? Not really. Yeah. We, uh, he was just a young guy who was walking around holding the book, as far as we were concerned, and somebody gave him a chance to, uh, I think Siegel gave him a chance to play a few lines. I think he admired Siegel, probably, and managed to get near him and uh, become the dialogue director. I don't know how he did it, really. But didn't get to know him. I remember him very well, hmm. and uh, because was so astonished that this mild-mannered little man, he was rather diminutive, I don't mean really little, but diminutive, and with a sort of almost angelic face, a little mustache, became this flamboyant, wild director of violent films. The beginning with Whit Bissell and Richard Deacon, oh, yes, you know, you right. coming to their office, that wasn't in the original movie, right? No, originally it opened, as the story goes, I'm met at the train by my secretary and so forth, and runs through without any narration of any kind, Why right was it through to the in? end. Because the studio felt the film was too downbeat. The film ended with me out on the highway saying, Help, stop, they're coming. You're next, please. Oh. Help, they're coming. Yes. All that scene. Well, they showed it at the... Uh, and that's the way it ended. That pull-away shot. And the audience of the studio just thought, What in the world is this? No <laughs> good. <laughs> well, you know, they showed it at the museum about five years ago that way. And I must tell you, people were babbling to each other, particularly the ones that had never seen it before. So we can't argue with studio politics, but whichever way, it works beautifully. Jack Finney wrote the original story. I talked to Mr. Finney in San Francisco mm -hmm. yesterday, yeah. and he's still working. As a matter of fact, the new movie Maxie with Glenn Close and Mandy Patimpkin? Pat, yeah, whatever. Whatever, uh, is his original story. But uh, I want you to know, and I can tell you right to your face, that he thought the original was marvelous. He didn't care too much for the remake, which you also did as a, well, in a in cameo, cameo role. Cameo. Weren't you yelling in that too yes, at the I end? I did the same right. speech, exactly the same speech that the original film ended with. I did throwing myself on the on the hood of the car, banging on this windshield with Donald Sutherland playing the right. part I played right. behind the windshield. And they see this face peering through the cracked glass. All right, now let's get to the pods. I promise we talk about the pods. Yeah. Let's take a shot. I think we've got a shot of you looking at the pod. You're, now. 
uh, this is when you're about to torch it, but tell me how they managed to get those clones of you and Carolyn Jones and we King We were Don all dipped into great baths of plaster in Paris. No kidding. We went to the studio and we, we laid down in this thing and they poured this junk, all this white junk over it. It gets quite warm. And they did the head, you'd have a straw in your mouth, you know, and they do your face, your features, you're breathing through the straw, you're keeping your eyes closed, of course, but then they paint your eyes in open afterwards. It was Ooh. really quite a gooey business. Now, the budget was $300,000, I'm I told. I think so, yes. Ten days rehearsal, yeah. and, of course, uh, the, that budget wouldn't permit any too many retakes. Uh, let me ask you about a lot of talk about what the movie really, truly means, because I asked this of Jack Finney, the original author, um, a lot of people equated it with the McCarthy era, the business about uh, depersonalization, people well, wanting not to have to worry about the world. What is your, was your, well, was, or was it just a crackling good script? That, well, no, I think there was some feeling about, I thought, well, gee, this is about uh, people who work on Madison Avenue. They have no hearts at all. They, <laughs> these advertising people who just turn out material and sell things and, and uh, do it unemotionally, but I don't know. Uh, I never felt that it had anything, any political significance. It came afterwards, after the fact, people began to find it politically suitable. Now, what did Finney say? No, he said he didn't think so. He never wrote it that way. Yeah, right. So Now, and for the good folks living up in Sierra Madre that we talked to at the beginning, that yeah. scene with the trucks, was that shot in Sierra Madre? Yes, it was. In this town square? Yeah, right. And I've been to Sierra Madre recently because a friend of mine have a, have a marvelous son who did Oliver at their Sierra Madre Playhouse, and I went up there recently, and that square is still there. But Kevin, I cannot tell you how thrilled we have all been to have pleasure you with us. pleasure to be here. Thank it you. It really is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And you and I know are doing get em hell, Give em Hell Harry throughout the, the country at different places, and I hope when you're in this area you'll drop me a note and I will pass the good word on to my well, friends. I'm here most of the time. Good. We thank you very much for being with us. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>